how does someone go about deciding who is going to be their coach? Who's going to be their mentor? Cause there's like, there's so many of them out there. And of course, it, <laughs> Miss, it, it, no it, shortage. It depends, you know, it depends. And unfortunately, unfortunately in this business, there's a lot of bad ones. Mm -hmm. There are. Um, well, so it's just like any other industry. Not. It's the 80, 20 rule applies to every industry, right? In every industry, it doesn't matter if you work in the corporate world, right? 80% of your, your, uh, co your colleagues are, are idiots, right? I mean, that's just the way it is. So, um, to, to find one, I think this is a great question. I think you look at a few different things. Uh, so who's the most single, most important person you, you select in your life, your spouse, right? After that, I would say probably your mentor. Okay. So the mentor you, you, you look after, or you want to work with, there's a few different things you're looking for. Uh, the, I think the most important is that they're living the life you want to live. You know, um, I don't post pictures of exotic cars or uh, constant traveling. I probably should do more of the traveling thing, but I don't post those things because those are things that are not important to me. Now, I'm a cars guy. I love my cars, but I'm not a car. I'm not going to be posting pictures of that, right? I'm posting my business successes and my family, uh, enjoying time with my family because that's what's important to me. So find a mentor that's living a life that's consistent with what you want to live, right? If you want to have more freedom, more time freedom, don't buy from a guy that's driving a Lamborghini. I'm not saying a guy with a Lamborghini doesn't have time freedom. You just don't know what his life is like. Time may not be a, a valuable commodity to him. So you don't know what his values are, what his value system, his core values, and so on. So find someone that resonates with you and who you aspire to be, right? I think that's the first thing. Second thing, don't be afraid to ask for proof of what they've accomplished, right? I can prove everything I say. And if someone asks me for it, I'd be glad to show it to them. I've got no hesitation. I can't say I have no ego, but I can say that my ego is not so big that I would be offended if someone asked me to prove what I say I do. That makes a lot of sense. That's fantastic advice, Steve. Um, so my next question, Steve, is one of your favorite questions when you uh, have guests come on your show. And the question is, what is your superpower? Boy, uh, I would say my superpower at this point is um, delegating. Um, you know, I used to be the person that did everything myself. Um, and I could, because at this point, I, you know, when I, when I did, I didn't have kids and I was newly married. So there's nothing wrong with working at two, three o'clock in the morning by yourself. Right. Uh, so I did everything literally, but these days, um, my superpower is I am good at finding people that love their craft and convincing them to work for me. Um, and then allowing them to do their great art. So, you got to meet our media team. They do what they love every single day. Uh, Max Jimenez, my business partner, you've met him. He runs the wholesale team, right? Like everyone does what they're great at and what they're passionate about. And my job is to get out of their way. And every once in a while, ask him, is there anything I can do to help you be better at your job? Is there anything I could do uh, to support you better in your role? But besides that, everyone does what they're really good at. And I am generally the bottleneck <laughs> the companies. no i heard you're the creator of chaos that's what i heard <laughs> i manifest chaos as well <laughs> i love it i love it so how do you convince people to come work for you when they're already making a great income somewhere else uh so you know what is the number one cause of infidelity uh -uh. lack of appreciation mm. right finances leads to divorce but infidelity is underappreciation, right? Not caring about your spouse, not loving them, giving them the love that they require, the love and attention. Same thing happens to employees. You know, employees these days are, especially today, now of all times, people are quitting in record numbers. Uh, so the inability to appreciate what you got, uh, the, the guys I have running the social media team, these guys are rock stars. They've, inc they've accomplished incredible uh, feats, you know, between them, they've uh, garnered 8 billion views, I think, in all the different 
things that they've done together. And they were not appreciated. You know, they were just like, yeah, go do this, go do that. You know, you work for me, right? This is attitude. You work for me and you're going to do what I tell you to do versus like, hey, what do you love? What do you enjoy? Okay. I mean, let's do that together. Why don't you do that over here? I won't be breathing down your neck and you get to do it your way. Every once in a while, I'm going to say, hey, maybe we should do it this way. Hey, maybe this is the direction we should go. But for the most part, everyone gets to do what they love and they're compensated for it. And most people are not motivated by money. I can share with you, I used to be a person very highly motivated, highly motivated by money. But we all get to a point in our career where money is not the number one thing. And a lot of people that we hire, money is not their number one motivation. They're motivated by being able to do what they love and be appreciated for it. So they want to be loved, right, for what they love to do. How do you show appreciation? Uh, so I'm terrible at showing appreciation. Um, I, I, I care about them, and I, I demonstrate to the best of my ability. Uh, something I did just this past week, and this is the exception, not the rule. Um, so Manny and uh, his brother Elias, who's our graphics guy, they both love that. They both love NASCAR, right? They kind of share with me privately. And somehow somebody mentioned that there's like this uh, thing where you can drive NASCAR. You can drive a NASCAR. So I talked to my team, uh, uh, Jaden, who's my right hand person. I said, hey, can you go look to see what it would cost to do a ride along in a NASCAR? And he did. It was 300 bucks for the two of them. And they are beyond ecstatic, right? So this was this past weekend. They loved it. Um, I got season tickets for the Suns. And uh, last week, you know, I gave two of our tickets to the guys that work on the media team. You know, it's nothing huge, but it's just everyone saw, hey, you know, go have fun. Well, yeah, but I think the biggest like, thing is I get out of their ways. I don't, I don't micromanage them. Yeah. But, you know, it's... Um... It's as you just said, it's not the money. It's not it's not the actual amount. It's it's that you that you actually thought you stopped and you thought what they love, what they care about. And mm -hmm. and you did and you did something for them that was yeah. they love it. And, and it was like, you know, it's like it's an old cliche, but it's really the thought that does count. Right. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I do know what's important to them, and we do talk quite a bit, so that I think that's a plus as well.